Me, Arnold. Today, he's working as a delivery man. Come on faster, Arnold, before the kebab gets cold. Just remember to always smile and you might get tipped. What interesting people live here. I'm guessing they are watchmakers. Oh. It looks like you're gonna get a big tip. Wait, what's that? Arnold, something tells me you're in some seriously deep doo-doo. I was right, Arnold. This is bad. Those guys aren't watchmakers. They're terrorists. And since you gave food to the terrorists, mm. now you're one of them. And you've been sent to a place from which nobody has ever escaped. Guantanamo Bay Prison. Arnold, didn't you hear me? Nobody has ever managed to escape from here. They don't even try because it's impossible. And if anyone even dares to try to escape, he'll have to find a way to get through 20 centimeter thick metal doors down an endless maze of corridors with surveillance cameras, fight off vicious guard dogs, get over super high voltage, five meter tall electric fences, through razor-sharp concertina wire and past dozens of guards in every sector. At the moment, 40 of the most dangerous criminals in the world are held at this prison. And you, my friend Arnold, are on the list. Congratulations! Nevertheless, you're not allowed to talk to any of them. After all, every prisoner is in strict solitary confinement 24 hours a day. Speaking of time, it's time to have lunch! Let's see what's on the menu for today. All right, what do we have here? They only have one special prison dish, something called Nutriloaf. Nutriloaf is a prison punishment food made from leftovers without the slightest hint of salt or spices. <laughs> Good Lord, that makes me want to barf. I have no idea how you're going to eat it, Arnold. So you're not going to eat it. You decided to go on a hunger strike as a sign of protest. Oh, and look how cute. You made a little dolly friend out of bread to keep you company. Well done, Arnold. But I think you overreacted about the food. I completely forgot to tell you, but Guantanamo Bay is not a place where human rights are given a whole lot of thought. So, if someone goes on a hunger strike, for example, he's force-fed with a tube that's pushed up yeah. one of his nostrils. Okay, so this plan doesn't always work. But don't think for a minute that this is over. A whole smorgasbord of tortures are waiting for you. Water, cold, music, and electric torture are all being practiced in Guantanamo. And the cherry on top is sleep deprivation. After just a few days of such torture, your brain and muscle functions weaken. Your thinking processes and your will can now easily be broken. After a week, due to lack of sleep, you'll start hallucinating. As a result of which, Arnold, Arnold, Now, what the bejeebers is that? Wow, your bread friend came to rescue you. Arnold, you're free. The only question is, where did a walking bread man get a high-powered laser weapon? Eh, as I already told you, Arnold, you're bescrewed, buddy. Hello, Arnold. Are you waiting for your friends? Hmm. My friends don't act like that. Arnold, what have you done this time? Oh, not you, but rather your dangerous aunt. After she walked free last time, she got up to her old nefarious yeah. habits again. And now the FBI are taking you for 24 hours because, well, you know her best. There are about 15,000 agents working for the FBI with 56 regional offices. Their main training facility is located in Quantico, Virginia. Virginia. More than a hundred special agents are at the 
a facility at any given time, ready to train new agents. They'll also teach our Arnold. An FBI agent has to be prepared for anything, but not for this. How can that even possibly come in handy, Arnold? FBI agents received the right to carry weapons in 1934, a whole 26 years after their founding. Nowadays, marksmanship training is absolutely necessary and one of the most important courses. And Arnold seems to be doing just fine. Having proved his abilities at all stages of training, our Arnold will become an FBI agent for 24 hours. Not bad company, Arnie. Perhaps our Arnold will try his hand at the cyber department created in 2002. That's where they have the kind of cutting-edge technology that will help Arnold in his search. Have you actually found what you're looking for already, Arnold? Come on, buck up, Arnold. I knew I shouldn't have expected much. After all, your belly always comes first. Thanks to a tip-off that was received by, of course, not Arnold, the FBI managed to find out where his aunt's accomplice lives, the infamous biker known as Buffalo Joe. And now a special operation is being carried out. Here's our suspect. Everybody get ready. Oh, Come on, Arnold. It's always something with you. Arnold, come on. Your colleagues need help. How are you going to stop him like that? What? It can't be. Ooh. Somehow, your idiocy serves you well. Here's your chance to interrogate a prisoner. Well, Arnold, to get answers, hey. you have to ask questions. And they say silence is golden. Oh, you have an idea, do you? You are gonna give him a lesson on good behavior? Oh, God, what a treacherous move. Arnold, I don't recognize you. I didn't expect you to be able to break this mountain of muscles like he was a little baby boy. Well, Arnold, you're darn close to capturing your aunt. Hey, how's about we continue with the search for your auntie? Let's go take a peek into the FBI archives. Over 5,000 individual strands of hair are stored here as evidence. There are even case files for Charlie Chaplin and John Lennon. We need to find your aunt's case so we can get a warrant to wiretap her butt. Now we can listen in on your aunt, just like with Pablo Escobar. And according to the latest information, she's just ordered herself a pizza. Arnold, this is your chance. You can go undercover. For your safety, you'll have a hidden microphone on you. And your task is to surreptitiously hide a bug in her office. The time is now. Hop to it, Arnold. Now, everything depends on you. It's really important that you try to act as naturally as possible. Ay, ay, ay! What a doorbell! Arnie, go into her house already. This is your chance. Go, go. Come on, Arnold. This is your mission. Go and put the bug in her office. Great. Now slowly and carefully sneak closer. Yikes! We seem to have a bit of a problem, Arnold. Uh, quick, come up with something. Oh, no. Arnold, get out! Run! Before it's too late! Yee! She's a little more dangerous than I thought. Arnie, hold on. Somebody's going to rescue you for sure. Uh-oh. The jig is up, buddy. Now she's going to myrtleize you without batting an eyelash. Did you come to apologize, Arnold? That's so sweet of you. Mr. Nice Guy. But your auntie's got other ideas. <laughs> you know, it's kind of ironic. You were chasing her before. Now she's chasing you, buddy. Brilliant, Arnold. Nice outfit. Are you ready to party? Out of sheer envy, Clint Eastwood himself would burst into tears like a little girl if he saw you. This'll be a super experience, I promise you. Dang, everyone's in cowboy suits here. Well, you're not the first person to copy this image. 
The American cowboys styled themselves after Spanish cowboys called vaqueros, and they appeared long before the American ones, when the Spaniards began to colonize south of the border. And did you know one in three cowboys was black, and one in four was Indian? And the language they most often spoke was Spanish, not English. Quite the introduction, Arnold. You really now are in the actual Wild West. And they call it wild for a reason, buddy. And nowhere is this moniker embodied more than in Fort Griffin, Texas. The fort was originally designed to protect ranchers and farmers who live nearby. The city quickly became a popular stopover for cowboys and criminals, and law enforcement was virtually nil. As a result, the city became even more dangerous, and it looks like you're now the sheriff of this city. Sorry, is it just me or are sheriffs not very popular in this little old town? Arnold. Really? The first thing you decided to do as head honcho around here was update your wardrobe? Mm. Why so surprised? Oh. The average life expectancy in the Wild West was about 35 years. And for sheriffs, it was decreasing exponentially. They were pretty much harmless folk. But people with weapons were called gunfighters. And they earned their living with guns. The most legendary shooter in the whole Wild West was Frenzy Bill Longley. According to various sources, he killed up to 85 people and had a $1,000 bounty on his head. Luckily, people didn't have such good aim back then. By the way, it was the era of the Wild West that gave birth to the culture of owning guns in America. Arnold, listen. Hearing that kind of music is definitely not good. In westerns, it usually means that bandits have entered town and are probably going to do something bad like rob a bank. It's Dirty Harry, One-Eared Tom, and Handsome Bill. Hmm, why were they given such obvious nicknames back then? Interesting solution, Arnold. You blew up the bank so the bandits can't rob it. You're a natural-born strategic genius. No, Arnold, you forgot about the train carrying the gold. According to statistics, there were 241 train robberies during the time of the crazy Wild West. Quite good statistics. You forgot one of the sheriff's main rules. Your revolver must always be in perfect working order. Adios, Arnold, and please quit this dang job. You just ain't cut out for it, partner. Poor Arnold's already rifled through the glove box, found last year's french fries, and is listening for the hundredth time to a Ricky Martin CD that's stuck in the stereo. I agree. It's appalling. Don't do it, Arnold. You won't save any time, and it's really dangerous. Say thank you, Arnie. I'm the one who saved your butt by stopping time, just like they do in cartoons. What would you do first in such a situation? Maybe go look in the Pentagon archives and find out if Armstrong really did go to the moon. Or maybe you dare to kiss Susie. Ooh. The main thing is not to end up in Japan. They love stopping time. I mean, they just really, really love it. In terms of physics, if time stops, then everything stops. You don't have to be a mathematician to understand that time is one of the components of speed and distance. If one of these values is zero, then all the others will be zero as well. Now, onward to adventure. Oops. Light particles and photons have also stopped. Accordingly, the ability to distinguish anything with your eyesight has disappeared. And you won't be able to drink any water. Everything is frozen. Here's another interesting fact. A stream of light which left Earth 65 million years ago is now 65 million light years away. And someone with a large enough telescope pointed right at the Earth can now see the dinosaurs. But I suggest we return to reality, Arnold. Now you won't feel like you're wasting time because every second of our lives is beautiful. <gasps> I built a machine that makes things invisible for 24 hours. There are three possible approaches to invisibility. The first is perfect transparency, which sadly we cannot achieve. The second is camouflage, when the light rays emanating from the object correspond to the rays that we would expect to see in the absence of the object. This is exactly what my machine does. 
And the third and last approach is when an object is swathed in a metamaterial, something like an invisible hat that transforms the path of light rays so that they seem unchanged. Now, we'll try it on a pizza. If everything works out, it will be a pizza that you won't have to share with your friends. Okay, I'm throwing the first switch. Did you know that the first three-dimensional invisibility was achieved by a group from the University of California, Berkeley in 2008? They created a mesh of silver microfibers that doesn't reflect or absorb light rays. As a result, the I sees light only from the objects behind the camouflaged entity. Now the second switch. Don't move, Arnold. Wait, what are you? Oh, you are such an imbecile. I'd smack you upside your head, but damn it, I don't know where you are. Put this hat on so I can see you. Okay, you have 24 hours. What are you going to do? Who'd have any doubt that's where you'd go first? If my machine worked according to the principle of invisibility, you'd become blind because the invisible body's refractive index becomes equal to that of air, and the lenses in your eyes would lose the ability to reflect light rays and focus them on the retina. The retina itself also wouldn't be able to absorb visible light with its rods and cones due to its invisibility. But as I can see, your eyesight seems to be okay, you slobbering ignoramus. Okay, now that the gym is closing, can we do something else? You have 18 hours left. I meant something a little more significant, you block-headed jerk monkey. After all, you could reveal terrible ah. secrets and perform incredible feats. You could even make your way into Area 51. Oh, right, it's in a different state. Do you have any ideas? Are you thinking about stealing it? That's a terrible idea. In any case, you need a plan. Of course, thanks to invisibility, you'll be able to stay long after closing. But then you'll need to bypass the guards. And there are also lasers all around the diamond. Can you really do a triple somersault, steal the diamond, and leave the museum in the car that will bring new antiquities for the exposition exactly at 2 a.m.? Even so, this is a really bad idea. The museum closes in an hour. Go hide in the corner and wait. And take off your hat, you mutton-headed twit. Get ready, Arnold. The main thing, obviously, is not to get caught. Arnold, it's go time! Aw, oh, nuts! All you had to do was a triple somersault, and you screwed it up again. <sighs> well, now, now you have to run for your life, Arnold! The exit is just around the corner. Come on, Arnold, you can do it! Damn, looks like you stole a glass copy of the diamond. Well, I gotta say this is an unfortunate turn of events. Although, to be honest, it's pretty logical that the original would be kept in a safe. Now you'll never have the love of the beautiful tug eye. Unfortunately, you're gonna become visible in just about an hour or so. So, good luck escaping. There are 7 billion people in the world, and everyone is hunting for you. 195 countries have posted your photo on all possible media. You're in all of the police databases, and not only the world's police, but all the best special forces in the world are after you. MI6, British Intelligence, which has been working around the clock for 100 years straight. ISI. Pakistan's Interdepartmental Intelligence Agency, with the largest residency in the world, 10,000 agents. The CIA. Watch out, Arnie. They torture people. The Canadian Intelligence Service, with a search budget of over $507 million. Do you really think you can hide from all of them? You're on every single smartphone in social media. You become more popular than Greta Thunberg. I'm sure she envies you now. After all, you can actually help save humanity. Just give them your blood, all the way down to the last drop. Elite special forces from all countries are already coming for you. U.S. Navy SEALs, the French National Gendarmerie, Chinese Snow Leopards. But of course, even a random student could catch you. 
Big Brother is watching you. In New York City alone, there are about 20,000 surveillance cameras. They take photos, compare the distance between the main features on your face, nose, eyes, mouth. Data is converted into a person's numeric code, a face print, and verified with the database. In addition, on the darknet, anyone can buy image databases from video cameras of cafes, hospitals, shopping centers, even near the main FBI headquarters. Meaning they can find out where you were just five minutes ago. Catch this. These glasses with built-in infrared LEDs will help oh. you to hide your face from the cameras. For them, your face will look like a glowing blind spot. Wait a bit. You forgot the battery. This isn't enough. You need a disguise. It was a bad idea to eat this many donuts. They provoked an excessive accumulation of gases. Unleash the winds! You look good, but search dogs will find you by the smell of butyric acid, the odorous component of your sweat. It won't help that just one gram of sweat is enough for the dog to smell you on the roof of that 10-story building or at a depth of 15 feet under concrete. In the United States alone, there are nearly 7 million drones. Stop waving and take this special weapon against drones. This gun fires a wide stream of electromagnetic emissions so you don't have to aim. It's enough for the interference stream to cover the drone, and then it'll lose contact with its base and lose control. What have you done? Get lost in the crowd, bone brain! Well, you have to kiss. So, Arnie, any last wishes? <laughs> it's pretty creepy in here. Hey, who turned off the light? Hmm. Arnold, you better not touch anything. What's going on? Mother of God, it looks like we're now in the 13th century and we're here during the Holy Inquisition. Hey. What an awesome trip. The main mission of the Inquisition was fighting the heretics. Hey, what did Arnold even do? Ooh, I think I get it now. They mistook your phone for a weapon of black mm. magic. The Inquisition didn't get along so well with progress. When Giordano Bruno proved that the Earth revolves around the sun, it completely contradicted Catholic ideas. Arnold, you're out of luck. In those days, all redheads were suspected of having ties with the devil. Relax. At first, they'll just question you. Take a seat and calm down. The chairs here are made of iron, specifically so that they can be heated. Confessions were usually obtained through torture. You need to give up heresy, Arnold. During the time of the Inquisition, a lot of heathen rituals were mistaken for black magic. They tried to convert heathens to Catholicism. Come on, Arnold, embrace Catholicism and you'll be free. It's true the Inquisition sometimes let those truly repentant go free. Holy baloney, what now? It looks like someone reported you. People often accused others of heresy in order to get rid of them. I don't know if you can endure any more of these tortures, Arnold. Meet the Spanish boot, the heretic's fork, and the Judas cradle. Arnold, I heavily advise you to confess about everything. Okay, by signing this, you agree that you're a necromancer, a magician, and a gnome. The positive thing is that the tortures are over, and the Inquisition, in fact, did not execute people. After confessing, the offender was sentenced in a state court. Calm down, Arnie. No one will burn you. According to the law, they'll just chop your head off. Wow, it looks like everyone is scared of your ability to release flames from your hands. It seems to be powerful magic.
Arnold, I have bad news. All governments all around the world have been overthrown, and they're now each ruled by dictators. Yes, on the one hand, it's good. No one will leave their countries anymore, and everyone will work for their country's well-being and standing in the world. But on the other hand, under such regimes, most people won't live in houses or residential complexes, but in prisons, because the laws of the countries will be very strict and sometimes even really strange. You can forget about the benefits of civilization. After all, foreign economic relations aren't needed anymore, and each country will now work just for itself. But what that means is if before there wasn't any heavy industry in your country, like, for example, making vehicles, now you won't be able to get a new car, and all you can ever hope for is some crappy bicycle at best. And I'm not saying that all social media has disappeared, but now you can only have private conversations with your friends somewhere deep in the woods and with the radio turned up really loud and now even if you want a haircut your hairstyle will need to get an approval from the local administration and there are just a limited number of government approved hairdos but what's most frightening is that all countries now suspect each other of being a potential threat so, almost all resources of every country are invested in military buildups. And alas, one of these days, somebody's gonna break down and hit that big red button. Arnold, you saved the world! Who would have thought your colorblindness would save the planet? Arnold, look! It's you, but from the future! Wait, Arnold, he doesn't need your clothes, he needs your help! That's why you're going to the year 2050! Oh dear, that's not the bright future people are thinking about! Indeed, by 2050, the Earth is suffering from global warming! The planet's population has grown to over 10 billion people. This overpopulation has caused a shortage of fresh water. Can you imagine? The planet is on the brink of destruction and they're fighting over Pepsi. All right, back to our mission. In 2050, everyone has cybernetic implants. And since enemy drones can detect implants at a distance of 10 kilometers, you, Arnold, are the most undetectable and invulnerable person in 2050. You are the one who will help change the course of the war. Soldiers assemble. And so, Arnold, the enemy has been spotted in the north, but the way is blocked by electromagnetic guns. Instead of projectiles, they fire electrical impulses, and the impulse speed exceeds 7,000 kilometers an hour. We have to find shelter. Quick, go down into the subway. You escape the guns, Arnold, but there are other problems now. Drones detected by scanners. And don't worry, Arnold, remember, these drones won't even notice you. You just need to rush past them and turn off the power. Well done, Arnold. The future sure wasn't ready for the likes of you. Keep going, buddy. You're almost there. It's time to get to the surface. Arnold, there are a lot of enemies around. Get into the exosuit. With it, you can become a super soldier and travel long distances without getting tired. And all physical activity becomes 20 times easier than it was before. You're unstoppable now, Arnold. Now you just need to figure out the controls. Oh. Arnold, no! You just killed yourself from the future. Okay, well, no time to grieve. Your enemies are coming. You have a flamethrower. Use it! Oh, yeah. No one ever thought that one day this would happen in Hollywood. <laughs> Arnold, look out! A rocket! This little butt munch won't talk for a year. Why? Because I said so. What the heck? Why do you look like that, Arnie? Children are watching this. You can't just go and change your style. You ruin everything, you derf jingle. Okay, did you know that on average, you speak 7,000 words a day? And after a year of silence, you... What in the... Arnold, I do everything for you. You should listen to me. Arnold, have you gone loco? This stereo system can output over 150 decibels. It'll burst your eardrums. Even a numb scullion like you should realize you simply can't do that. Okay, Arnie, that's it. Enough. 
I'm taking not only your stereo, but also your phone, laptop, Xbox, and all your toys. You thought you were gonna resist me. Are you serious? Come here, you little schmuck. Take that, you ingrate. Don't you dare. Don't you dare turn on that stereo. What the heck? Arnold, if you do that again, I'll watch What If You Were Sawn Alive into a thousand pieces. That's it. Now get yourself cleaned up. <clears throat> After a year of not speaking, your voice will drastically change. Our brains tune our voices, relying on hearing. In a year, your ears will forget how you sounded. Besides, talking after a long period of silence will hurt. Without exercise, your vocal cords will become weaker and your lungs will be quickly getting depleted of oxygen. You look strange. Are you all right? Did you change somehow? Remember, you can always talk to me.